and welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for some ephemeral aggro. We played ephemeral aggro about three days ago, but uh, and the deck was good. But I wanted to try turning up the aggro part to 11 and making it much more aggressive. And that's what we're going to be doing here today with this deck. You can see our curve basically all ones, twos, and threes besides two Hikarams at the top. And that's not something you see too much in Legends of Ruterra, um, a deck with just so many ones, twos, and threes. So we're going to we're gonna see how it works. So I'm playing Shadow Fiend, a one mana, four, three, ephemeral. Like, I'm not sure how, how good that's going to be, but I want to just try being super aggressive with this. We got the Silent Shadow Seers um, in here as well. And because I'm playing these two cards, because I'm playing Shadow Fiend and Silent Shadow Seer, and, and so I'm playing a whole bunch of ephemeral stuff. Then we get to play Deathmark. And I've been pretty impressed with Deathmark whenever I've seen people play it against me. And so I want to try this card. So it's three mana. You remove ephemeral from one of your allies and grant it to an enemy. So basically you can use this as removal on a, on a, like a champion. You can give like their champion ephemeral. So it's gone at end step. So for four mana, you can play a Shadow Fiend to be a 4-3. And then you remove the ephemeral from it and give it to an opponent. I guess if, if you're not sure, if you don't know what Ephemeral is, it's basically like whenever whenever the unit either strikes, like whenever it hits something, or whenever the the end of the turn, then it just, then it dies. So, um, you know, so it's only like a, it, this is like a one mana 4-3 that hits once, but then it's dead. Uh, <clears throat> no Ren Shadow Blade. I think that's the 2-4 Fearsome, right? Oh, that didn't work. Oh no, that's the six four. Oh, it just costs that costs eight mana. Like we're I'm just trying to be a lot faster than that. It's just the eight mana thing. Yeah. We're we're being real aggressive. Yeah, I don't I don't want an eight drop in the deck. Um if we would want an eight drop, I would rather play uh the eight drop that I should definitely know the name of Rasa. I'd rather have Rasa. That's a better eight drop. But anyway. Uh, let's see. So the payoffs, the reasons why we're playing Ephemeral, like, like, uh, so why are we playing like these creatures that as soon as we attack with them, they die? Um, a couple of things. We have Soul Shepherd. Whenever we summon an Ephemeral ally, grant it plus one, plus one. So we'll make these things even bigger whenever we hit with them. Um, we'll go to that one. We have the Phantom Prankster. Whenever any of our creatures die, it deals one to the opponent. So, you know, like all these things that die, uh, you know, they take one. We have Hikaram as our one of our champions. Whenever we've attacked with eight plus ephemerals, then Hikaram flips. All of our ephemerals will then have plus two, plus zero, and whenever it attacks, um, you still get the two raiders. Basically, whenever Hikaram attacks, you get two ephemerals that are attacking, two three twos that are attacking also. So we have all those uh, payoffs, but then the big one is the Shark Chariot. This card is amazing. This is what our, our this really makes our deck go two mana three one ephemeral. So you know. You, Play it, it's three one. You attack for three, it dies. But whenever you attack with another ephemeral, like in another turn, if the shark chariot's dead, you bring it back attacking. So it just keeps on coming back attacking, and it's real hard to defend. All right, so that's all about our deck. Super aggressive. Let's see if it works. It may be, yeah, it may be <clears throat> too aggressive. We're gonna see. Hey, awesome, Alexis Bros. Cool. Yeah, played the game for two hours yesterday, and it was great. Cool. So you're not sure how the mana for spells really works, though. Yeah, basically, if you, it's just if you don't, if you, if you have unused mana at the end of a turn, then you get to bank your mana. This is a pretty good hand. We don't have, we don't really have more ephemerals. Um, do I want to? I don't know. I may just keep this. Yeah, I'll just keep it. So if you don't use any of your mana, then it can go to this bank where you can save up to three more mana. You can't save any more than that, just just three. And then that three mana can only be used on spells. So basically anything that's not a unit. Shark Chariot's only weakness is Detain. Hmm. Yeah, you're right. Not many people play it. Play Detain, but... Good to know that has Everything does have a little weakness. 
No, you only no, you don't get see my opponent didn't play anything, so they get so they have three mana banked. I've I've been playing stuff, I've been spending my my mana, so I have no mana banked. You only get you only get unspent mana can go there. And now so now they have three mana for spells and three mana for creatures or spells. So that they could play a six mana spell. That's pretty good for them because yeah they get a free blocker on the three one. They're just blocking here too. Yeah, it's possible they just don't have jinxes. It's possible. Oh, they're going. Ugh, that hurts. Not really a good use of Mark of the Isles. Nothing can stop me. Nothing can stop you. Well, these Mark of the Isles didn't look great. I think we're missing Glimpse Beyond. Ugh, that's good. The problem with Glimpse Beyond is... Um, is like with the with the ephemeral stuff, you usually want... You know, you want to be striking with all this stuff. And if you strike, then it goes away. And you can't, like, strike and then sacrifice with this kind of deck. Reporting in? Attack the six. All right, so if I go, if I go double mark of the aisles here, that'd be nine, and then they take 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, so they'll, they'll be dead. They take nine. This whenever any of my creatures die, they take one. Oh no, sixteen. So creature dies, they take one. Dies, they take one. And these things, whenever these die, deals one to both of us. So they take another one there. Dead. They take another one. Boom. Never mind. Mark of the Isles is great. Just put it on a three-one flyer. Double giant growth. Good ol' aggro. And they're dead. Isn't bad. I'll try keeping it. Yeah, we'll just get the one drop again. It's nice. Yeah, there's yeah, there's a a Wrath of God, there's a you know, destroy all creatures. It it's in Shadow Isles. So it's in the green color, and it costs 9 mana. 
But the, so spells in general are just overcosted in the game. But that's it actually so like at first I was thinking, man, the spells are just so expensive, but it actually plays out well because you get to bank spell mana. And because you basically get to use, you know, you get to use this for ramping. Like, they could play a, a six-mana spell on turn three right now. If they had a six-mana spell. Or they get to play Zed with... Also, they have three mana to protect Zed. So it actually plays... It actually plays fairly well. And it, so it makes sense, like, how the, the spells are expensive. So I'm debating between playing Zed and playing a Prankster. I'm gonna play Zed. I am the blade in the darkness. Are you supposed to be here? Whenever Zed attacks, you get the ephemeral um, living shadow that's attacking. So Zed attacking does bring back the the shark. I needed that to stay alive so I could attack and then and then I was gonna attack and then death mark and use death mark to kill their Zed. Ugh. No, I don't have the mana to do onslaught and death mark, you know, to make a ephemeral and then hmm, that hurts. Ouch, that hurt. That, that ruins ruined my plan of death marking this thing. Everything's better with company. Says you. Do they have the card to make this lose ephemeral and give it to somebody else now? Full speed ahead. I mean, now I don't get to attack with my three three, so I don't want to block. I don't want to attack it into that thing. Yeah, that is very true, Rex. Yeah, the the games are the matches are very fun and engaging, but they don't take forever. What is this all about? There. Yep, they do have the remove ephemeral card. No, I wish I didn't. Ugh. That thing's dying. I wish I would have had mana for that. Oh, no. I guess they just want to turn Zed into a 7-6 because now whenever it attacks, it brings along another 7-6 along with it. That's kind of crazy we're playing an, an ephemeral mirror. You don't see very many ephemeral decks. But there are, you know, there are some, but it's just not a very popular archetype. I wonder if this is like an actual mirror mirror. Maybe this is a viewer. That'd be cool. Okay, no, I don't have that card. It's too late for you. Play 
Please resolve. Please don't have a trick with that six mana. Please resolve. It's my only hope. You don't think I want to do it on the shark? I guess the shark can't block. But I was thinking it would be... So this is what I was thinking, because if the shark doesn't have ephemeral, whenever it... Like, they're going to have to kill the shark anyway, right? To stay alive. Whenever they kill the shark and then it, it comes back again, will it be... We got two of these, they're at two. We get to just jump block. When it comes, so when, when this shark comes back the second time, would it not be ephemeral anymore? Because I, I feel like it wouldn't be. I kind of wanted to try that out. I wanted to see what happened. Yeah, so the shark has to die. And then whenever it dies and then comes back, Again, I think it wouldn't be ephemeral still. And so, no, it wouldn't keep coming back, but, you know, it would just be on the battlefield. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe, maybe it's better just to, to keep the 3-2 on the battlefield with the shark not being able to block. It should be ephemeral. Okay, oh, y'all are saying it would be ephemeral when it comes back? Okay. I thought it would still keep that in all zones, but... Oh yeah, definitely some Towns. Towns Van Zant for sure. What do you call that technique? All right, so how do I want to sequence this? I think we want to get the duos out first. Yeah, especially drawing this death mark. On, hey. Boo. On, yeah, so all right, so we'll I'll use death mark on the shadow fiend. Absolutely. We don't need to do that yet. So they're Braum, Trindamir, and Nivea. So they they're playing a a big powerful deck where they want to get to the late game. The Yordal here's with me. They could have Avalanche. Yeah, this this looks like a War Mother's Call deck, yep. So they could have Avalanche that just wrecks all these things. No avalanche. Avalanche is pyroclasm. It costs four mana though. I I don't believe Deathmark would be the like if they have the Anivia egg out, you could give it to the Anivia egg, but I don't think if you give Deathmark to Anivia that the egg would also have ephemeral. 
So I don't think I don't think Deathmark would be a, a great way to get rid of. Um, Anivia. All right, they're down to seven. Next turn, we'll have six mana, so we can play Hecarim before combat if we want. A troop of Elnix. So making this block here because Hikarum's gonna bring. I mean, if I play Hikarum, I mean they could play Wrath of God. They have the mana for Wrath of God. That's risky. Or Hikarum. Could definitely just be sitting on Wrath of God. But it's like. They have Wrath of God, that's really bad for me. If they don't, they're dead. I think we go with the if they don't, they're dead. <laughs> We're gonna call their deck cattle. This card's really good. Five mana, three, three. Whenever you play it, you get to put into play every Elnuk that's in the top 10 cards of your deck. And they're like, these decks are only 40 cards, so. Well, they didn't have, they didn't have Wrath of God. Deal three to each enemy that was summoned this round. Not quite good enough. Not quite good enough. Hey, yeah, Fig, I've been yeah, I've been playing this new game. From Riot Legends of Rune Terra. It is awesome. So level one Trindamir with Ephemeral will level up end of turn and stays Ephemeral the turn after. I think it's the only creature which survives a turn with Ephemeral. Huh. Yeah, I wouldn't expect that. Well, I, I, I was not the attacker on turn one, which made the Shadow Fiend worse. Okay, makes sense because Trindamir doesn't die, so it keeps the keyword in buff. Okay. That's why, because Trindomir doesn't die. 
<clears throat> we have a whole bunch of one mana four threes. You can't shuffle the cards around in your hand in this game. Yuck. That hurts. Because obviously, of course, I want to play the Phantom Prankster, but I can't play the prank a, a zero three into a five one challenger. There's something wonky with the Legends and Ruterra deck tracker. Mm, well, I can't really do anything about that. Only the finest serve. What is this? Five four, draw one for each five power ally. It's a Noxus card. That card's good. Aggro! <laughs> Aggro! Let's attack! Let's see what you've got. Okay. All right, they're down to 12. You know, I could have used this as just a three damage spell, but we'll save it. Because we can maybe get a creature with like the unleashed spirits and stuff. So basically, those one drops were just kind of removal spells. We spent three cards, we killed their 1 1 and 3 1, and dealt them. Seven damage total. Ouch. This card's not good against all this challenger stuff. I guess we'll use this to kill the wolf. All right, so I just traded my plus three, plus three with their Frostbite, which isn't the worst trade. It's not really the best trade either. Hmm. Yeah, if I play he Hecarim and Relic, it does level up Hecarim. Sharpen the blade, secure the kill. But I'm also worried about... If I do that, I'm worried about just another frost Frostbite that's going to kill my Hecarim. So I kind of want to wait one turn and see if they use like the Frostbite over here, that kind of stuff. And get this 2-3 in play. Line up. Could be, could be a mistake, of course.
We're gonna need Hecarim to do a lot of work. This will be quick. Interesting. That was it was not my best line. It was my safe line of my safest line of protecting Hecarim, but it was not my most powerful line. Which you know, maybe that's me trying to play this like a mid-range deck and not like an aggro deck. Like maybe I just need to go all out play, you know, we're aggro. So I could see, I could be convinced that was the wrong, the wrong line to have. Darn, they had another one of these. Faster than my arrow? I think not. We got our three Unleashed Spirits again. So we get that turn that we could have had last turn. Again this turn. There it is. Um... Gotcha. Attack. <clears throat> As is, they have to block with at least three things. They can let the two three ones get through. I know a challenge when I see if I use if I use the death mark and remove ephemeral from one of these three ones, then they turn into one ones. That's what I was scared of. The last turn. So they're gonna frostbite this and then kills it. Let's see what you've got. Hmm. Okay. Oh, yeah, I should have just not... Yeah, because I had lethal damage for how they blocked, so I should have just not even done that. Right, because then I gave them a chance to respond. Well, it worked out. They didn't have any anything. So, yeah, they forgot about the trample with Hecarim also. That's something that I've definitely forgot about, like, twice, maybe three times. Forgot about Hecarim having the Overwhelm. That's an easy thing to th to forget about. Well, the all-in aggro deck's working out so far. We've played some close games. That's <laughs> one heck of a card.
So I'm attacking turn one. I can just attack for four. But then the Shadow Fiend doesn't bring back my chariot later. I want stuff bringing back my chariot. Come, the journey ahead is long. Oh, this is control. Yeah, so I definitely want stuff bringing back the chariot. Um... I mean, I think it's... I think playing against control is kind of good for us. I think. Because we have, like, especially how we drew Shark Chariot, because Shark Chariot can keep on coming back. I think that's a good thing. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Yeah, Chariot's definitely our best card. It's whether they have... If they have, you know, Heimerdinger early and just go crazy with Heimerdinger. Um... Then, you know, we'll still... Like, that's how they're going to win. So we have to hope they don't have just... They just don't have, like, Heimerdinger in their hand immediately. Have too many you cannot escape too many pranksters a prankster can be good against control because you know it just does the damage here but if you don't have it's not a, really a threat on its own so if we don't have threats yeah that's a great card that's a threat Yeah, I could have I could have definitely slowed down and, and played all the pranksters first. Mark Mark of the Owls is good because we can just make one of these ephemeral to bring back Shark Chariot also. No deny, no deny. Yeah. Each creature that dies does three damage to them. This is going to be difficult for them to survive. They play a lot of things that like target stuff, like target our things, which isn't a great spot for them to be in. They don't really play as many sweepers and stuff like that, especially these colors don't really have sweepers.
they have like there's the four mana spell that does one to two different things they can do like one to this and one to this Uh, looks like they're putting two spells on the stack. Surrendering. Yeah, the, getting Shark Chariot, very important for that kind of matchup, but they didn't have Heimerdinger on turn five. And without Heimerdinger on turn five, it's pretty, pretty hard for them to win. Oh, cancel. We got a reward. A Wild Capsule. Get those wild cards. All right, got some more wild cards. Good. Definitely useful. I'm surprised these furniture people aren't here yet. They said they would be here three between three and five local time, and right now it's four forty one. So So I may have some people delivering furniture show up at any in any minute. Oh, do we have a mirror match? What are they doing? Oh, Karma. I just saw the colors. Yeah, it's definitely going to be 459. That wouldn't be too bad, though. I wouldn't be upset with that. I'd be more upset if they just never come. They never show up. That'd be more sad. Shadow Assassin. I'm gonna play Zed. To the Zed brings that uh, living shadow along with it. I will play my part. To bring back the shark chariot. So I kind of want to go sh Soul Shepherd, Soul Shepherd. This turn. I guess maybe I'm supposed to go duo. No, I want to go. I kind of want to go double Soul Shepherd. Lame. Because they because they just had this thing that was gonna block the duo. Um the Yordle here is with me. Full speed ahead. I'm being a little greedy here. I'm going to try to wait to get the other Shepherd in play before relicking. A little greedy. I'll admit. <clears throat> yeah, I'm surprised they didn't block. And trade, but I guess that's why they didn't trade because they were going to <clears throat> vile offering and get another sp spooky spider. Master. Am I supposed to play Hecarim or Haunted Relic? They're both both such good options. Haunted Relic. Yeah, I mean, I could do both. Ugh, a lifesteal? Ephemeral? I could do both, but I just don't have- I don't have room to attack with everything. I have unfinished business. Hmm. 
I'll just hit him for five in the air and then put a new Shadow Seer back in my hand. Shadow Seer has looked pretty sweet. <laughs> they really blocked this completely incorrectly. They should have the 1-1 one, one block the 3-3. Three, three. They should have the 5-5 five, five block here. They want. They should be doing their lifesteal last. Um, because right now, because they can only gain one life. So like this thing's supposed to gain five life, but they can only gain one. I will Put... Learn. Blocking there is is very wrong. Oh, okay. Well, they're going to remove that. They should still have it blocking. At least the, they could have at least done the third one and gain some more life. I guess it's not going to matter too much. They gain another 5. They go back up to 19. They could be at 20 right now. Awesome, Barchile. Cool. Yeah, this game's awesome. Bounce spell. All right, so they're using a bounce spell, but I did block, so just like magic, like they don't actually get to the... They don't actually get the damage in. What do you call that technique? It's just better for me to play all this stuff. So Hecarim is four things attacking. Ruination. Night falls. Shadows gather. I was not expecting that. Wow, and Vile Feast is the absolute perfect card. That was just the absolute perfect turn for them. Yeah, GG's. The order rewards the faithful. Where there is life, there is hope. Night falls. That was perfect. <clears throat> the answer lies within. Come on. Well, I guess I could have played around Ruination. I just haven't. Oh, we got to do this to block. I haven't. Um, I haven't really, basically, ever played around Ruination with this game, and I think for the most part, it's it's helped out. It's just whenever people do have it, it's a pretty big blowout, of course.
one candle for every soul. All right, they got me. They had a good deck against mine. Those ephem ephemeral life stealers were really solid. Those ones were real solid. Let's see, I need to edit this. So let's say. No, stop. So that card, without like the other payoffs, like that card just making two mana make, two mana make some three ones to attack just doesn't have, doesn't have like some great payoffs. Like, you know, that's not an amazing card if it doesn't have the payoffs. Hey QQ, good evening. Nothing like the great outdoors. I, yeah, I had a black spear, but. Um. Black Spear deals three damage. I didn't. I couldn't. I couldn't survive their attack. I'll scout ahead. They had even with casting like both Black Spears, they, they had lethal no matter how I cast two Black Spears. But I was also even if I could stay alive that turn, I still had no chance of winning anyway. Bump it up. What did you find today? All right, I was planning on playing the Shadow Seer. <laughs> yeah, I got Cyber Kitty. These vile feasts have been destroying me. All these people playing these vile feasts. Reckon me. I also should be passing back to them. Seeing if they tap out. Alright, so they're at 15. Another vile feast. <clears throat> I have this time I have protection from vile feast with these Mark of the Isles, and it works really well because this thing's ephemeral anyway. Really? Man, last two games, my opponents just have had all the answers. 
Like, like who plays that spell? Just grant an ally elusive? This is the Teemo deck that counters Ezreal. That's what we're playing against right now. I hope they don't have another removal spell, even though it's pretty likely with the five cards of them playing nothing the last turn. I would love to be able to hit with this and create another copy. I could remove the ephemeral and put it on this spider, but I mean, come on, we're just giving ephemeral to a 1-1, one -one, like... We try to try to do better. I don't think I got any shark chariots this game. Ooh. Okay, now we're talking. Gonna save this to bring back the shark the next turn and try giving that 6 6. Alright, they said that the people are approximately 10 minutes away. Probably go put the dogs and just put them in my room. Uh, did they have like what? Did they have like a deny or something? Oh, they just killed my thing. Okay, well, I'm dead. Okay, I could play these as chump blockers. Nope, that wouldn't work. That thing has... Nope, that doesn't work. GG's. We played against two decks that... Uh, kind of had all the answers for me there. Alright, we're going to try to play one more game. Hopefully get a, a good fast start, not play against the control deck. Darn it, we're playing against control. Because I just want to play against something fast. All right, chariot is great. Give me chariot. Perfect. I was very dead, Avalonians. How... I had nothing, and they had huge creatures and millions of cards. How was I supposed to win that? My deck doesn't come back. Like I, I had zero percent chance of winning that game. They're out there. I'll spot them. All 
All right, I'm going to play the chariot right away. The opponent could disconnect. I, I mean, I guess that could happen. All right, so 99% dead. I guess they could have disconnected. Hey, Team Mello. Fresh tracks. Okay. Can't Be right back. Yeah, end round. Sorry, opponent. Yeah, I don't have any glimpse in the deck, but yeah, maybe I need that for, yeah, against removal. This isn't really a good trade for me. None of these are good trades. Well, that's gonna die anyway. All right, they just showed up. <clears throat> Night falls, shadows gather. We about to attack for a lot. Not attacking for nearly as much anymore. I was about to be a six three and then a seven four. Ugh. Cold isn't the only danger. Bonus deck's annoying. Ready the torches. I said, still have the, the two shark chariots. Then keep coming back. Okay, that's a good draw. Opponent, just let us win. Everything's better with uh, 
Be right back. Made it just back in time. Elnox, what are these things? Man, that's bull. Bulls. Oh, right. Right, I should I should not use this. I want to hit with this thing in the air, because yeah, now I lost. Yeah, I should not use that. Yeah, I shouldn't use that. I mean, I guess what I am doing is if they don't have removal, I'm pumping up this thing. I'm pumping up this thing. Now this is a nine-one, but yeah, no, I shouldn't have played that. I forgot that we were gonna get so many creatures. Be a yeah, no, I shouldn't play that. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah, they're all for ranked. There's only ranked or expeditions. There's, yeah, no expeditions today. Yeah, that was a waste. Ooh, that could be good. And yeah, doing expeditions on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Thursdays. Those are the first three days that they're available. It's playtime. Only got one mana. We should just be able to go straight to attacks. I'm not going to play this first. So I'm going to try to just go straight to attacks. They'll never see us coming. I think this should work. Where? Oh, okay. It's triggering that. Bring the sharks. Because, yeah, Hecarim attacks just brings five attackers alongside. <laughs> That's pretty silly. Yeah, they didn't remove Hecarim. <laughs> Incubus song. Thing. Goodbye, nice to know you. They could have they could have frostbite all enemies, so like this isn't necessarily game because of that. So they need they need removal for the O3 and then also frostbite all enemies. So like it is possible they could survive if they have like the you know those two perfect cards. Oh the frostbite all enemies is a slow card. Yeah, that's what I was saying they need removal for the O3. And frostbite all things. Well, then if it's a slow card, then they can't. So they could. Okay, frostbite those. They need removal for the O3. They have that, and then removal for that. But that's that's not quite enough. All right, six and two. All right, so we'll finish that one there. Good, good, you know, getting that win after a couple of losses. We got the Shark Chariots against the control deck there. We, you know, we lost the two uh, slower decks without the Shark Chariots, the other games, but a uh, fun deck to play. This is a, you know, pretty all-in deck. Um. I have to say, I, I really like the Silent Shadow Seer. That card felt better 
than I expected. Uh, but yeah, that was a that was a pretty exciting two drop uh, to play. The Shadow Fiends were hit or miss, but you know it's a one mana card. I liked our list. I liked our all in version of Ephemeral. It's not going to always work, you know, but it worked seventy five percent of the time, so that's pretty good. So we'll take it. All right, so that's Ephemeral Aggro. So those of y'all watching on YouTube, hit that like button over there, and of course leave those comments. I'd appreciate both of those. Um, but, uh, yeah, that's, that's it here. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you for the next video.